Hey everybody, welcome back to another MATLAB tutorial. Uh, this time we're going to be looking at generating the Mandelbrot set, a plot of the Mandelbrot set uh, using MATLAB from scratch. So if you're not familiar, the Mandelbrot set is basically the set of complex numbers. So when a complex number that is in the Mandelbrot set is substituted into C in this equation and iterated from Z equals zero, the series of Z's that are generated uh, does not diverge or does not approach infinity. So for example, if we had a complex number C and we set Z equals zero, um, as z sub 0. Uh, z sub 1 would be 0 squared plus c, z sub 2 would be z1 squared plus c, z sub 3 would be z2 squared plus c, and so on and so on. If the series of z's that are generated um, approaches infinity, then um, that point is not in the Mandelbrot set, that c that we tested. If the series of z's uh, either stays around a value or does not approach infinity or basically does not diverge, um, then that value is in the Mandelbrot set. So if you find all the, the C's, the complex number C's that are in the Mandelbrot set, and we graph them on the complex plane, it looks something like this. And I'm sure you've seen this before. It's a pretty famous image. Um, there's tons of uh, people on YouTube that you know generate these and zoom in and have all these different colors and it's crazy and it's really awesome. Uh, but for this tutorial, we're going to be really focusing on a simple way of generating the Mandelbrot set. Um, it's not going to be complex. It's going to be something that uh, someone beginning in MATLAB could get a grasp on, and it uses a lot of good fundamental skills that you should be um, learning uh, if you're just starting off in MATLAB. Um, this can be a cool uh, programming project, uh, an assignment, or something like that. Uh, feel free to use it. Um, I, and this might not be the most efficient way to do this, uh, but it is the way that uh, I think would be easiest to grasp for a beginner. So the first thing we want to do, though, um, when we are looking at uh, this problem, is that we want to develop a helper function that's going to check if any complex number C is or isn't in the Mandelbrot set. So this function is going to return a Boolean value. It's going to return true if the point, if the complex number we give it is in the Mandelbrot set, and it's going to return false if the complex number we give it is not in the Mandelbrot set. And the way that it's going to check if this number is or isn't in the Mandelbrot set is it's basically going to iterate those z values like we talked about in that equation. It's going to keep iterating them and iterating them, and it's going to stop if they approach infinity, which we'll talk about how we're going to tell that, or it'll stop if it keeps iterating it and it doesn't look like it's doing anything. Then that means it's not approaching infinity, and we can kind of assume that that point is in the Mandelbrot set. So this function we're going to call... Um, well, first we're going to have it return a, a boolean value called inset, and that is basically going to um, be true if it's in the set. It's going to be false if it's not in the set. We're going to name this function Mandelbrot check, and we're going to give it two values, two parameters. And the first one is going to be c, and that's going to be a complex number that we want to check um, if it's in the Mandelbrot set. And we're also going to give it max iter, which is going to be an integer that's going to be the number of maximum iter it's going to be the maximum iterations before we kind of just give up and we say, okay, if it's not approaching infinity by now, it probably will never. So every time we check a number, we want to set z equals to zero because the first z value, like we talked about, in that set of z's is going to be zero. That's where we start. We also want to define a counter variable that's going to count how many times we've iterated through the um, the loop that we're about to write. So now we want to write a while loop with two conditions. The first condition is going to be the absolute value of z has to be less than 2. The second condition is going to be that the counter has to be less than the number of maximum iterations. So basically this defines two conditions that have to be true for this loop to keep running. The absolute value of z has to be less than 2. The reason why we picked that number is because, you know, based off of the numbers we're going to be getting from this, if the absolute value of z is greater than 2, it's probably going to be increasing to, to infinity. And it's, pr it's very, very likely that it's going to be increasing to infinity. So we can kind of just assume the minute that the z value reaches anything greater than 2, we'll just stop the loop and say, OK, it's not in the Mandelbrot set. Another, um, another thing that would cause this loop to terminate is that if the counter uh, um, is greater than the maximum iteration. So if we're running through this, we set the maximum iteration to maybe something like 500. And the minute that the counter variable gets to be 500, it'll stop and it'll say, OK, if, if the z value is still less than 2 and the counter variable reached 512, we're going to stop the loop and we're going to say, OK, I think this point is in the Mandelbrot set because it's not 
uh, approaching infinity, and we've run it, we've run through the loop like 500 times, we've iterated it like 500 times. So the equation that we've talked about earlier, z equals z squared plus c, so it's going to keep updating z like that, and we're going to increase the counter by 1 every time we run through the loop. And that's really just what the loop is. Um, now we have to check if the point is or isn't in the Mandelbrot set. We know that the point is in the Mandelbrot set if the counter variable is equal to the maximum iteration, because that means we went through this loop how many times we said maximum, and the only reason it stopped the loop is because we reached the maximum iteration, not because the absolute value of z was greater than 2. So that means we are in the Mandelbrot set. So we'll return in set is equal to true. And then we'll say else in set equals false which means that we have probably got z greater than 2, which means that we are not in the Mandelbrot set. Okay, so we can just first test if this function is working. Um, a good way to do that is we go back to our plot of the Mandelbrot set, which I got from Wikipedia, and we can pick two points that we know obviously are or aren't going to be in the Mandelbrot set. So right off the bat, I can see that this point is going to be that the origin of the complex plane 0 plus 0 i is definitely going to be in the Mandelbrot set um, and the point 1 plus 0 i is definitely not going to be in the Mandelbrot set so we can test this function we can say Mandelbrot check 0 plus 0 i and then we'll say our maximum iteration we'll say 512 it's a good number and then we'll say Mandelbrot check can't type 1 plus 0 i 512 oh we don't want semicolons on these so we can see the output so if this function is working correctly the first one should be true the second one should be false or 1 0 in logical numbers and that's exactly what we get so we know that this function is probably working the way it is and we can go ahead and start plotting the Mandelbrot set so, the first things we want to put in our script are clear and CLC, just to clear the uh, workspace in the command window. Uh, not absolutely necessary. The next thing we want to do is we want to define a step variable. And this step variable is just going to be the steps that we're going to take, um, the discrete steps we're going to take um, when we look at the complex plane. It's going to be the steps that we take for um, looking at each complex number, the grid size, if you will. So our RE plot, we're going to make a vector called the RE subplot, which is going to be the range of real numbers that we want to, we want to test. Um, if we look at this plot once again, we see that the, really the range of real numbers is really just from negative 2 to 1. Anything past that would be unnecessary to look at and would just waste time. Um, same thing with the imaginary numbers, it's really just from negative 1 to 1. So um, that's really all we need to look at. So we can do that by saying the real is um, the real range is going to be from negative two, and we're going to step to one, and then the im plot is going to be negative one step to one. So that oh sorry negative one. So that is going to um, create these two vectors um, from negative two to one and from negative one to one with a step size of whatever we define it here, and we can change this to get a better or worse picture. Now we're going to use two for loops to iterate through these two vectors. So the first one is going to be, we're going to say for re is equal to re subplot. And then for im is equal to im subplot. So this is going to basically, for every real for every real number in the re subplot um, vector, we're going to iterate through every imaginary number. And we're going to define a c sub in. This is going to be the complex number we're testing in that specific iteration is going to be re plus im times 1i. So that is just going to basically define the complex number we're testing based off of the iterated, the iterated values of re and im. So now we want to check using our function that we built if this is or isn't in the Mandelbrot set. So we'll do if Mandelbrot sub check c sub in and then our maximum iteration will do 512 again. If that is true, then we'll run whatever we put here. And basically, we want to plot it. RE, IM, 
and then we'll plot it as a red dot. So R dot end, end, end. So what that's going to do, like again, is just going to go through every single complex number we, we define based off of this. It's going to go through, iterate through every single one, test it, and if it is in the Mandelbrot set, we're going to plot it as a red dot, and if it isn't, we're going to do nothing. So basically, if it is in the Mandelbrot set, you'll see a red dot on the plot. If it isn't, it's just going to be a uh, white space. So we'll start off with a pretty big step size. 0 0.1 is a you know pretty coarse step size, and we will generate a picture. Actually, there's one more thing we have to do. We have to do hold on. That way, every point we plot will stay as the next point is being plotted on the graph. Okay, so now we're ready to run this. And we get a picture that looks like this. So this is pretty pretty good. This is what we expect it to look like. Obviously, it's a it's not as detailed as what we have on Wikipedia here, but it's the same shape, and that's pretty cool. Um, and we can get this to look more like that by decreasing the step size. So if we decrease this to, instead of 0 0.1, if we decrease it to 0 0.01, and we run this again, this will take longer. Um, it will eventually pop up a better picture of what the Mandelbrot set looks like. All right, here it is. Look at that. And that is very, very, very similar to what we have here, pretty much identical. Um, Obviously this has some limitations, this code, because if we make this bigger, you could see the individual dots. There's better ways to do this where it, it you know, it graphs it as a, you know, a, a picture. So these dots aren't here and it's, you know, it blends everything better, makes everything a lot sharper. There's better ways to improve this algorithm so that it doesn't, you know, have to check every point. There's ways you can incorporate color into it so that depending on how the function, um, is bounded, how, how this set of Z's is bounded, it'll change the color, and that's where all the different colors come from. But this is, again, this is a good, um, this is a good way to, you know, use fundamental MATLAB knowledge to generate something pretty cool and something useful. Um, and let's just do that one more time with a step size of 0 0.05. So you can play around with this, and you can, uh, you know, generate different, you know, different, uh, Step sizes, obviously, the you know, depending on your computer, if you do a really small step size, just like any FEA program or anything like that, it's going to take a lot longer. Uh, but it's a definitely a cool way to do it. Uh, please let me know if you enjoyed this video, and uh, thank you very much.